What's up, everybody, and welcome into the Backliners Podcast, Agro and Barracuda. As per usual, this week, look, you know that we really need some juice, some gas, whenever we call in the big guns, and we sure have this week. It's Dave Dolson Olson. Dave, you're much like corn uh, because you have the juice. Um, I, uh, I can't say the other one. I guess I can. I'm also a big lump with knobs. Um, <laughs> um and i can't imagine a more beautiful thing and that's on self-confidence so good yeah i wasn't um i really wasn't sold on you dave until i tried until i tried you with butter um yeah yeah that's uh that's what really sold me bear have you seen the tiktok that we are referencing no i uh do not have Uh. tiktok you well yeah I, i do have tiktok but i only watch ones that joe sends me um, oh, that's, yeah. fair. that's fair. But well, she how is, many does she send you? So many. Yeah, okay, so, this is good. Yep. Well, so I don't want, but I don't watch all of them. I can't. Like, what? I just can't. That's I, a little disrespectful. Yeah, I know it is, and I feel badly about it. But I just, <laughs> I, I, I can't do it. It's so many. I don't open yep. the app. Uh, mm-hmm. For a while, she was just DMing them to me, and then we would like right. sit down on the couch and like I'd check my DMs. We would just watch them, and then one time I like opened up my DMs and it was like, "You have four hundred plus new messages," mm. and I was wow. like, "I don't want to be around anymore. Like that's too many <laughs> for me that's to want to like try and catch up on." You know? Well, there's no. Mm-hmm. That's really on you. There's no way she sent you four hundred between sittings. No, you no, just didn't it was check for it was weeks. weeks. At a time. It was weeks. Yeah. it was. But what am I? Okay. What do I have to fold it into my routine that I have to like check every my... night for about an hour? Mm-hmm. You scroll through TikTok. They actually, actually, you know what's bad is they actually have, um, they have like a dude who pops up. Like the actual TikTok account has some some formula behind the scenes where. If you have been sitting and scrolling on the app for long enough, the next video you swipe to will be from TikTok themselves. And it's like one of their creators they hired out to say like, yo, you've been scrolling for too long. Take a break. Come back later. Um, And I haven't figured out what that threshold is, but that's usually my cue to go to bed. Um, Wow. I didn't um, know that was a thing. When does the dude tell you? (laughs) I want to figure this out. At the end of the day, that has to be, like, they must see, like, reduced return on ads after a certain amount of time, or else they would never do something like that, right? Like, right. Mm-hmm. in no way would they willingly be like, hey, stop using our platform. Get off of our app. Get Let's off of our outside. app. Yeah, because we what care you about you. Yeah, right. You care about me, TikTok. You don't, okay? I don't yeah. believe them. Um, and so they yeah, must, they must have some interesting data or data um mm. in order to in order to show that are you guys data or data fans data data oh okay. there we go perfect all right and that's the synergy we were looking for that is what i uh used first. Um, go ahead dave yeah i was gonna i was gonna give shouts to the platypus in chat who's talking about you use tiktok when you go to the restroom mm-hmm. um and one of my favorite recurring um bits on tiktok is like I always find, like, Reddit, TikTok, whatever, the comments are usually funnier than, like, the actual post thing itself, itself right. a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorite comments is, and it's on a, it'll be on random videos, um, whether it's, you know, a happy puppy video, like a soldier coming home video, sports, gym, whatever. It do- totally doesn't matter, and it's just somebody who says, congrats, you're the video that kept replaying while I was wiping. <laughs> um, because what you'll do is you'll you'll use it while you're going to the bathroom, and then you uh-huh. just put your phone down right, right when you're course. finishing up. Yep. And the video just keeps looping through. Right. Um, depending on how long that process takes for you, so it's funny. Right. Knowing that you've you know you've experienced a video and 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 TikTok in a very similar way in a very vulnerable state. Yes. Um, alongside many other users, that's just one of my favorite recurring comments, um, and it always catches me off guard. That is a good, I I like that comment because it's something that, that surely everybody has experienced that's, uh, that's doing that. And we don't have a sponsorship for this product, but we really should try and get one. Um, because I'm a huge fan of just get, we got like bidets off of Amazon. Um, Mm -hmm. they're life changing, dude. Mm -hmm. It, It is not hard to, to install. Um, and where before that video may have been looping for an amount of time that I don't want to say. 
Uh, yeah. Now it is much, it's a much faster process, and it's better right. overall. Um, so yeah, I agree get, with you, Agro. They're get in on that. They're so OP. The and best. They're relatively cheap. They're like twenty or thirty bucks. Not expensive. Amazon. Yep. And, uh, you know. And however yeah, you, unhandy you think you are, podcast viewer yeah. slash listener, you can do this. Okay? Mm-hmm. It did take me longer than yeah. I want to admit. And I did feel a sense of accomplishment that was unwarranted for the amount yeah. of difficulty that it took. <laughs> but it still made me feel better inside and out afterwards, you know? Yeah. This, uh, this, this choice one, 35 bucks for the Lux Bidet, uh... There you self cleaning nozzle. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Uh, no, I mean you can definitely get it for around that price. And for the record, if you don't want uh, a bunch of people knowing that you're searching for bidets, well then we do have a sponsor for that. Oh. Is what I'm here to tell you, Dave. Did you know that uh, you could be missing out on your favorite show on Netflix or something like that just because it isn't available in your in your region? Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, it's absolutely horrible. It's happened before. Well, let me introduce NordVPN. Uh, look, VPNs, we all know what they do uh, at this point. We've been telling you about how great they are, how they keep your information safe, how they help you uh, make sure that no one's spying on your activity. Not that you're doing anything weird, but, you know. You, gotta look up for the you don't want to see, like, 53 bidet ads. You know, if, you, like, if you're right. listening to this uh, on a, without headphones in and you're... Alexa or Google Home hears yep. this hears us talking about bidets. You're gonna get a million bidet ads, and God forbid you actually Google one. It's gonna be this whole ordeal with a VPN. You know that could be a little bit more segmented. You can keep your mm. your information a little bit more private, if you will. Uh, plus, it helps yep. uh, with your passwords and all that kind of stuff, making sure that all of that information is encrypted and you don't have to worry about your IP or location getting out. And they've doubled down on keeping you safe with their new threat protection feature. Say goodbye to intrusive website ads and malware. Even if you download an infected file, threat protection kicks in and deletes it before it makes a mess of your computer. And don't forget, there's literally no risk to you within their 30-day money-back guarantee. So give it a try, and if you like it, great. And if you don't, they'll issue you a refund, and you can pretend the entire situation never even happened. Dave, (laughs) what's a situation you wish you could pretend never even happened? (laughs) Are you referencing what I texted you about today? No, I'm really not. This was just like, how could I segue oh. this in the most uncomfortable way possible for Dave? And don't forget that I still have to give out the link at the end of this. Um, this yeah. is all a part of the ad. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I want to go into this more later, but for the sake of the ad, I'll talk about the fact that I got crushed by a Smith machine at the gym today in front of everyone. I wish mm. I could forget that that ever happened. Right. Well, uh, if, so you, uh, if there was a money-back guarantee like NordVPN has, they could. Uh, but bad news for you, Dave. There isn't. <laughs> Uh, and you will have to live with that. It'll live with forever. me forever. That's oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Check out my link, uh, which is nordvpn.com slash backliners to get your subscription started today. You get a huge discount on a two-year plan plus one free month. So that's nordvpn.com slash backliners. Thanks to NordVPN for being a part of the show. All right. Uh, I, sh- I suppose There's we should. so many things. I know. So many things God. to go over. And let me get out ahead of them, okay? We are doing the show a little bit early. Um Today, because Dave and I have a fantasy football draft that's happening at eight that we both that I forgot about when we yeah. talked about moving the show to a Tuesday today. But there, yesterday was a U.S. holiday, and Bear and I were enjoying ourselves. So there's nothing we can do about that. I had my fantasy football draft yesterday. So. Bear also had his <laughs> fantasy football yeah. draft yesterday. So fantasy football is kind of owning the backliners, yeah. but the backliners yeah, are going to be owning fantasy football uh, right after this. So a couple factors going into today's show. Number one. Fantasy football is owning all of us. So we are we are going to have to be out of here uh, within a reasonable amount of time. Number two, we are in this might offseason um, in between phases a little bit. And we do have some content that's coming up that we are planning on doing. But right now we're in a little bit of a uh, drought. So this episode is going to be smite light, if I had to guess. Though we are going to talk about casting here in a little bit with Dave, um, as he is the resident expert. Uh, and thirdly... I'm in a mood and will not be convinced to not be in a mood. Um, yep. mm-hmm. So if you are uh, the type of viewer who goes down to the bottom of the YouTube channel and looks for when someone said Smite, star- Smite Talk starts at timestamp, um, this is not going to be a long episode for you. Uh, it might be very, who knows where it will be. And who knows how long we're going to stay on it. So I apologize in advance if that's what you're here for. If there is, uh, I did want to say that if there is like 
more broad, abstract type of discussion that um, that our viewers or listeners want to hear. Uh, I will be checking comments, um, and you feel free to tweet at me or put it in YouTube comments or anything like that. And uh, I think that we are... What, Bear, remember when we started this whole shindig yes. way back in the day? And we would talk about things like how to win a ranked game as a jungler. You know, we would like talk about mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that you could yeah. go back and listen to those episodes, by the way, because those are still things that, that are relevant. And I just feel like it. we would just be rehashing that episode, but it's been literal years now at this point. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that, because we covered a lot of various Smite topics, and I feel like we did a pretty good job at doing that in the off season. but now I feel like we've kind of covered basically everything. I mean... Yeah. If there's anything uh, you guys want us to discuss, uh, definitely leave a comment or DM me or Agro or Dolson. You know, you never no, know. Don't DM me. Don't DM Dolson. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't DM do Dolson. It. No. Well, it depends. No. It depends what it's about. If it, if it's like the life of a mediocre MOBA player, then absolutely, I'm your guy. Uh, if you actually want to know how to win games, then no, stay far away from my DMs. DM Dolson. The, well, <laughs> listen, we all want... It, it, here's the reality of the situation, Dave, is that I think a lot of our viewers and listeners are probably just looking for an excuse to DM yeah. you. A foot in the sure. door, so to speak. I was you know, giving him one. You gotta have that opener yeah. uh, in order well, to slide into the DMs appropriately, you know? And and, mm-hmm. and speaking of feet, that is the right way to, to get into the DMs. Just a mm. quick... <laughs> just kidding. Please, God, no. Please, dear God, no. Oh, man. <laughs> I... <laughs> Give me like a minute. <laughs> Look forward to hearing yeah, how many feet pictures you get in your DMs. Um, if it's more than zero, I've shot myself in the foot. So hopefully, yeah. it's um, hopefully it's that many. Fair enough. Um, yeah, Bear, or you said you wanted to get into it a little bit, uh, Dave, about your your gym mishap because it also does re- yeah. it does relate um, to one of the fine hosts of this here program yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, so Bear and I have been running into each other at the gym. Mm-hmm. A couple of times. We had a nice long conversation. I felt kind of bad, Barra, because we talked for like... Yeah, I have to spot Dolson. You know, he does about right. nine times the weight that I do. And I have to just have to keep lifting it off of him. And it's just... <laughs> well, I could have used you today. Um, so, I won't get super in-depth on, on the mechanics of it. But um, I was doing squats on the Smith machine today because it's just more stable and... and... I have to focus mm-hmm. less on keeping myself from, from moving around, and I, I can just focus on pushing the weight up. Um, and I wanted to make it more quad-centric, so I put a little platform under the backs of my feet so my knees would go forward, it would stretch the quads more, and it would work the front of my, my legs more, um, for any who are interested. Um, now, I put decent amount of weight on it, and I was doing fine, went up a little bit, I was on my last working set, and I was going up. You know, I got to push myself. I got, like, a tad dizzy um, because I was holding my breath and really pushing up and, and, and mm-hmm. you know, kind of got a little flush. Um, and when I pushed up to the top, uh, what I had chosen to have the backs of my feet on were not super stable. Mm. Um and it's actually kind of scary. So this is going to be bet. a warning. I bet. This scares this me. Is, this, is, this is going to be a warning to, to all who want to work out. Uh, somebody just DM'd me a picture of their feet. So, <laughs> um, that's why I'm looking down at my phone. Record time. Record um, time. Uh, ban described from chat, if you could. That'd be great. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, let this be a warning. If you're using the Smith machine for heavy movements and you are underneath it, there are little, like, guards on the side that you can put up where if you drop it, the bar doesn't go all the way down to the floor. Because mm. my foot slipped off this platform, which knocked my body weight off, and you have to roll the bar forward for it to lock on the rails right. to, to keep mm. the bar from going down. And when my foot slipped off the thing and I'm all dizzy from doing too much, obviously I fall backwards. So right. my hands roll back. Right, pull it off. I kind of stabilize myself, but suddenly I'm like one leg underneath this weight. Um, and I like kind of nearly get it forward, but I'm like hunched over at this point. Um, and my fight or flight mm. kicked in and it was, it was big time flight. And I just like, I rolled out as fast as I could because my back was like bent at a weird oh, angle. Hate this. And, and this is, and this is, um, 
So props to me because it was a lot of weight, and so I looked super strong when I was actually doing it. Mm-hmm. The downside is, is it was so much weight that it boomed through the gym mm. oh. when I dropped it. Um, and, and so I did what any respectable person would do and just laid on the floor face down for about 15 <laughs> seconds. And even though I could have gotten up and walked away, I pretended like I was hurt um, <laughs> to get sympathy from... From the room. <laughs> so I was laying on the ground, head in hands, like just flat down, bars like on the ground, like inches from the ground. And so like serious warning, if you're doing heavy weight, use the clips because if I hadn't rolled out, you know, I'm like under all of this right. weight and it's not, not safe at all. Uh, so that's on me. Um, but I did try to seek sympathy from those who just heard all this weight crash. And surely you got feel- some. Did anyone yeah, come to your, to your valiant yeah, actually, rescue? It, actually, it was super, it was super nice. Um, <laughs> I felt a hand touch my back and I stand up and like maybe the one dude, clearly nobody at the gym is bigger than I am, but the one guy <laughs> who was bigger than me, uh, kind of had his hand on me and he's like, whoa man, like did you pass out? And I was like, yeah, that was definitely it. I, I don't know what happened. I just... <laughs> And so he, like, grabs my arm, and I'm like, oh, no, my back's just tweaked. He's like, no, I'm a paramedic. I'm checking your pulse. And I was like, yeah, you de- probably do that. You know, I don't know what- <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And, like, like people in the bench rack that's right in front of me are, like, staring at me. And I'm, like, kind of, like, feeling my back. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Something's, <laughs> Ooh, something's yeah. tweaked back there. Um, and that was literally my second exercise of the day. Um my back is, like, a little sore, and so I need to, like, be mindful of it. Um, Stretch that bad boy out. I, I, lit- I went over, and I did, like, one hamstring exercise very much on a machine and not free weights on, on me, <laughs> um, and I left after that. So uh, that was my gym story for the day, and let it be a lesson. If you're on the Smith machine, use the clips, um, and, uh, and don't do so much weight that if you're going to finish, you're, you're not going to be able to, like – racket uh so it was potentially scary and ended up being a moment that i never want to uh think of again but Mm. i guarantee you 10 years from now i'm gonna be awake in bed thinking about that one time (laughs) the entire gym was staring at me pretending to be hurt in the fetal position on the ground so that was my story and i do have to say that as someone who who knows dave pretty well um he is not lying when he says that 10 years from now he really will (laughs) be thinking about that exact moment 10 years from now because um, you have to understand, there's a hi- there's a pyramid at the gym, right? There's a hierarchy that's get that gets built in my own head, uh-huh. and I'm like, you know, I walk <laughs> that around, everyone like, follows, <laughs> right? That everyone clearly follows, right? You know, it's my I, I try to build like an idea that like people can come up and ask me questions if they want, but I also look like I know mm. what I'm doing, blah blah blah, mm. and that just blew it up in like one moment. Anyone who's there, um now knows that I should never be trusted with anything. Mm. Um, And, um, yeah, now I have no credibility. Luckily... Welcome to my level. (laughs) Yeah. Luckily it was, like, half empty, but um, horrible, horrible... But now you have no pressure on you, Dave. You you know, you're you're putting all this pressure on yourself to to appear in this manner, and now uh, you don't have that burden anymore. You can just go in there and do your thing and not have to worry about it. Absolutely. You yeah. know what I think? Have you ever heard girls talk about the ick, like getting the ick about something? I don't know if that's a term you guys have heard. No. Um, it's it's like super mundane things that, for whatever reason, off put a girl. It could be a guy too, I guess. But but in my experience, obviously, it's it's been girls who have said like, "Oh, the vibes when a are guy, off. When a guy, I don't know what gives people the ick. Claps when a plane lands. Suddenly, like. Uh, okay. mm, suddenly, yeah. like, the, like mm-hmm. the, the alarm bells are ringing, and, like, I just can't be attracted to this person at all anymore. Yep. I think that I just gave every person in the gym the ick, is mm. my point. Like, like seeing me crumple under weight suddenly is just, like, icked every human um, within or earshot. And it was it's like a, a like a vulnerability. Like, oh, this guy yeah. is, like vulnerable like he's more yeah. approachable now like, yeah there you go God there. On the yeah. Pyramid. he didn't like, get mad i was thinking when you were describing yeah. the ick i was thinking yeah. about like examples of it uh right. i thought of two immediately um Ooh. that i know are pretty much guaranteed if you do if these are things that sound familiar to you uh dear podcast listener or viewer um these are things that i would recommend working on uh number one it's getting overly mad uh about really anything at all but uh overly yeah. mad when 
things don't go well for you, um, especially, that is, uh, that is always a turnoff for uh, potential partners of, of any gender. Um, and then the second one is getting overly competitive about things. Oh. Like when yeah. you're joking around, like playing a game of like, uh, I'll throw an example from, uh, from a great show, which was Married at First Sight that Joe and I were watching a while ago. Psychotic show, by the way. Um, is it the, real? Yeah, the, I don't know these, why I'm asking that. these people, these people like just submit themselves to uh, these matchmakers, basically, and then they get married the first time they see each other's at the altar, and then they just like follow them through a honeymoon, and then they like live together for a few weeks. It's awesome, uh, psychotic, by the way. But mm-hmm. the, these two were like playing ping pong, and you know they're messing around, having a good time, whatever. And then the girl starts to win, and the guy starts getting really like competitive. In mad and like I've got to win this game uh, mm-hmm. and it was like weird and th- I've seen that in uh, a lot of like old friends and, and girls that I were friends with like dating guys who would get like that and it is just that's like one of those things that it's the ick is a term I've never heard but that's like the yep. first thing that that I thought of but what Barra's saying is true you know you kind of you, yep. you rolled with a bad situation um and uh and you didn't like fight the smith machine which uh, I literally some rolled might do. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. out of the way it yeah. was it was terrible um but yeah luckily it was a relatively empty time so my exposure could have could have been a lot worse like peak gym time mm-hmm. um I avoided that at least Barra I had a question for you as someone who used to go to the gym with Dave a lot mm-hmm. and it sounds like you two are running into each other there um mm-hmm. how have you mm-hmm. been battling the uh overwhelming <laughs> feeling of uh just inefficiency and um just complete uh i'm trying to i'm thinking of the word and i just can't it, my brain's not giving it to me like inadequacy a thing? yeah no oh, yeah, you, you yeah. just just oh. complete inadequacy that you feel trying to work out next to dave have you felt that uh, as i did <laughs> no i uh oh, okay, that's just I, me cool. well dave approached me and <clears throat> i was like yeah. so in my own head that i was like i was half wondering i was like is this a dream <laughs> like i'm pretty sure for the first like five minutes of t- talking to dolson i was like i don't think this effects. is real yeah and i was like this am i this doesn't seem right i know i just saw this and, dude uh, get crushed by a smith machine <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i've kind of just accepted it you know yeah, yeah you that's what you have to look do. at yeah, I accepted it instantly i was like yep. i've never well i might be you know give me like 10 years maybe and I will, you know, got maybe it. get the muscles that he's got. But uh, I accepted it instantly. I was like, yeah, uh, he's doing do. literally 10 times the weight that I'm doing. And uh, I will just, <laughs> I mean, I, I understand where I am on the hierarchy. Yeah, the, in, in Dave's <laughs> trying, in Dave's pyramid of the gym hierarchy, uh, we know our place. Um, and I think that's I need, important. I feel like I need to clarify that. <laughs> no, um, you don't. I love everyone, and everyone's welcome at the gym. And actually, my favorite moments at the gym are when people who are new come up to me and ask me mm. questions. That's like mm. absolutely my favorite thing in the mm. world. Because I didn't really ha- I went to a super small gym when I first started, and I didn't really have anyone to, to go up and talk to. So when people ask me stuff, I love it. Even online with like Twitch chat and stuff, that's been great. Uh, so everyone should feel and is welcome at any point in the gym. At it's any true. Time. It wasn't anything you were doing, Dave. When it's I meant just hierarchy, I meant like people who look like they know what they're doing to be approached about that sort of stuff. Right. Um, to everyone who's in there now, I'm no longer a Going source of information. Oh. Right. Hmm. Like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's unlucky for As long me, as they're not but... asking about the Smith machine, they should be fine. Okay, we should probably talk about our, our general topic uh, here that we had. And that was that I tasked young John Barracuda Salter to uh, to come up with some casting questions. Because uh, I feel he's like... He's interviewing us. Yeah, they're, he's interviewing you mostly, Dave. I, I might toss my opinion in here and there, but I'm I'm washed up. I'm, I'm out of the game these days you know you're the expert around here so they're they're really for you okay you don't just lose it though aggro it's like riding mm-hmm. a bike it's like yeah. riding a bike you do you remember two it. minutes ago when i couldn't remember the word inadequate <laughs> yeah but <laughs> me too that's but that's that was happening when you were casting too I mean, oh really great so i was never good okay i see that we our roles have reversed for this episode dave that i that i'm doing all the self-deprecation this time around did you not just hear the tirade <laughs> i went on about 
Smith machine. Cr- I'm gonna scroll through TikTok tomorrow, uh-huh. and there's gonna be a person who goes to my gym posting about oh. watching a dude get crushed by a Smith machine, and that's their ick now. You know what I mean? Like I've gotta live with that every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> there is um, no way that happens, but oh I, my I, god, would it be funny? If I'm it gonna did. be 90 with with a family and great grandchildren. I'm going to feel a slight tweak in my back, and I'm going to wonder if it was that day back in 2022 <laughs> when 315 pounds crashed down on my back and erupted in the gym, and everyone who was in there had to watch me crumpled up on the floor mm. like a wet noodle. That's what I'm going to be thinking about when I'm 90. I'm not going to be enjoying it's life. True. I'm not going to be loving my family environment. I'm not going to be enjoying the, the position I've put myself in. I'm going to be thinking about being crushed by a Smith machine. So that's uh, yeah, because only if if those children only knew what their great grandfather did <laughs> when, when posed in front of a Smith machine. All right, Barry. My granddad telling me about his World War II adventures. Me telling my grandchildren about my Smith machine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's all comparable. Exactly. All right, I'm done speaking on it. All right, Barry. <laughs> fire away. Uh, so I actually tasked Destiny with coming up with a question. Wow, <laughs> outsourced, <laughs> unbelievable. Well, I, I had done this before, and I, I remember that I had, and I was like, I wonder if she can come up with any questions that I wouldn't normally have thought of. Oh, okay. Um, so her first question is, did you always see yourself casting, and if not, how did the opportunity arise for you? Which is a mm. good question, because I would not have asked something that like that. That is a great question. Um... So, so no, I did not always see myself casting um, in a literal professional sense. I mean, mm-hmm. I've always been more vocal and I don't, robust is not the right word. Maybe robust. Verbose. Is <laughs> Verbose is the right word. You're right. It does happen to cast. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a nice, robust pasta sauce. Um, <laughs> No, I've always been the more verbose one in my friend group. So I, I've always known, and, and like growing up, my parents and my grandparents always said I'd be great at like being a lawyer or or anything forward facing because I'm I'm good at talking. But like esports always seemed like just kind of out of reach, like its own little industry. Like mm-hmm. don't know anyone in it. How do you how do you possibly get involved in something like that? Because um, I really started watching like the LCS back in back in college. But but it always seemed unattainable to the point where I didn't even really think about it. Um, maybe more so thought of, of potentially streaming than, than I ever did casting. But um, I went to college with um, one of my best friends. His name is Dom. His older brother, who's also one of my really good friends, um, Pretty Hair, or, or Nick, as Ryan and I know him, um, works on Rogue Company now. But he was one year older than me in college, and um, he, I think he had an internship with high res like over the summers at the time, and, and when he would come back, you know, we, we would hang out and stuff through my friend Dom, and the way he tells the story is, is one night we all went out in, in Athens, Georgia, and if you're familiar or not, you know, it's like 90 bars within mm-hmm. like a couple square miles, and... Um, that's like kind of the culture there. It's like a lot of what there is to do. So we all went out and um, my apartment at the time was super close to downtown. So we all came back and we're just hanging out at my apartment after the night. And I've always been the type who's fine, like sitting back and watching people who are better at me, like play games and actually enjoying it. My roommates were really good at Super Smash Brothers and Nick is super competitive. So they all sat down and started playing. And in my um, alcohol fueled gusto decided to start like kind of jokingly commentating it um and the way nick tells it in the back of his head he was like you know this guy's actually kind of good i know he's drunk and not really trying but like the way he talks and the energy he has like actually is not too bad um and again he was an intern at the time eventually got brought over to the esports side to work on paladins and they went they went through a few casters um, I had graduated, I was working in consulting, eventually went to Home Depot, so I was, like, super far removed. Um, but Paladins entered a time where they needed someone local, someone available, someone relatively cheap to be able to step in and, and help and help cast. Um, and I, I was always kind of a, a bug to, to Nick about, like, getting me a job at high res Gaming, blah, 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 so cool. And I happened to bug him once at a really good time when they were looking for someone. He's like, actually, you know what? 
I remember you were actually like sneaky kind of good at this. Um, if you come over to my apartment, you know, every night or, or once a week for the next like six months, we'll give you a tryout. You're going to learn Paladins um, and we'll get you up and running. So I went in, tried out. We casted a game of League because that's all I really knew at the time. They recorded it, showed it to the higher-ups. They thought that I had potential, and then I really had to learn Paladins. And so Nick worked with me a lot. Rain Day, who was here at the time, worked with me a lot. Gormizer worked with me a lot um, and got things up and running. And I guess I did a good, a good enough job then. I was only on Paladins exclusively for one year. That was Season 6 of Smite, so it would have been the last dream hack, um, Last Worlds, um, and, w and became friends with a lot of the guys on the Smite team, so... When some of the other smite casters were leaving, Paladins was downsizing a little bit, and, and they found a way to organize it where Gormizer and I transitioned over to smite from Paladins, and we, we did Paladins like once a week. Um, so that's really how I got involved, was, was like just, I, I'm the poster child for like knowing someone, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, that, and that gets you into the industry. Obviously, I'll give myself some credit that like the talent to do it, but... I, I purely was just given a shot by someone who was already at the company, and then I give myself credit by doing a good enough job on my initial chance to, to kind of stick around after that, but um, kind of a long-winded story, but good it can story. be summarized by, by knowing someone and letting the alcohol confidence... <laughs> and that's the moral of the story. That, that's the moral of the story. Right um, there, yeah. And at the end of that first year, the alcohol had me crying and thanking everyone <laughs> for the best year of my life. Oh, it's just true, you, dude. Just that... you guys wait. Oh, oh my God. This <laughs> after party at Worlds. This after party. <laughs> it's going to be something. It's going to be the best. It's, it is going to be the best. best. It's true. That first after party that Dave was a part of the, the Paladins casting team. Yeah. I just uh, such a good such a good after party that year yep. and uh, very good memories of Dave uh, with with yeah. happy tears about his, his transition tears. and everything like that which was <laughs> awesome um, and it is true by the way from the outside uh, Paladins was looking for casters and I remember Nick was uh, interviewing a bunch of them and no offense if any of the people who interviewed uh, for that position before Dave are listening but Nick was losing hope rapidly. Um, yeah. And then he was like, oh, you know, Dom, my little brother, his friend, uh, he was like drunkenly casting Smite or, or Smash one night a while ago. And uh, we're going to try him out. And I was like, holy crap, we are really in trouble. If that's like where we're, if that's where we're going. Um, but, uh, fair. but Dave totally came fair, in and, know. uh, and has always, uh, has been impressive since day one. Um, and, uh, and yeah. I'll say what I said then, which was his he has so much going for him naturally when it comes to like casting mechanics it's really just a matter of how well can he learn the game that he's working on and uh and i don't think that dave gets enough credit for how well and how quickly he understood smite in particular you know no disrespect to paladins in any way but no but uh, he, he came yeah. from a shooter background much you know at the end of the day point and click it's move the payload it's it's you can right. kind of let your chair to do a lot of it MOBAs are very hard to even chair one for. Um, and Dave really picked up his game knowledge very quickly uh, on Smite. And that was always going to be the, his only limiting factor. And um, it clearly has not limited him. Thank God, I'm, uh, thank God I'm not drunk right now. I'd be crying. And there it is. <laughs> you, can listen, you can listen to it back later, you know. That yeah, was, uh, I will. And I'll do it. That's how it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was actually kind of funny because I remember like coming in for tryouts for Paladins... Um, F dot was in studio one of the days and it was the first time I had met him and he's like, Oh yeah. Like what's your background? You know, I used to do radio, this, this gig, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I work in data engineering at home Depot. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. I got nothing, man. I'm sorry. Um, and to his, to his credit, he was super supportive. He was like, yeah, man. I mean, people come from all different backgrounds and, and find a way to make it work. So yep. definitely an unconventional journey. Yep. Um, for me, it was uh, I did want to be on camera. I want I was I went to school for on camera broadcasting, but I had no intention of getting into esports, even though I was obviously very into them. Um, mm -hmm. I really wanted to be on Sports Center. Was my uh, was my big dream. I had no, I never once thought about doing play by play commentary at all. Um, I didn't think that I had the voice for it. I really was worried that I didn't have the voice to be on TV. Um, 
in general because it's such a it's such a competitive thing um mm-hmm. but was working in sports radio uh just kind of started playing smite on xbox competitively on the side i've been playing smite for a while and we just kind of like looked at the xbox players were like these guys stink and sure enough they did um we also did for the record and uh and my team didn't make a land because someone uh slept through a set against a winless team um we didn't make land i basically messaged uh adonis i think it was because he was the lead caster at the time and was like hey if you want uh to have a guest caster for this xbox event like i'm definitely down uh and they did and they flew me down um and i did some casting there which i had really never done before uh and i thought i was just gonna desk but i ended up doing some casting and i flew back on monday morning uh as is tradition you know stupid early in the morning um flew back and then fell asleep as soon as i got home and then i woke up to a text from adonis saying hey if we uh if we offered you a job would you move um and i said yes and that was uh and that was that so yeah never never had any intention of going into play-by-play in any way but um definitely ended up uh enjoying it quite a bit i I like doing it and we're all better off for it yeah you know who you remind me of aggro and i thought of this because you brought up sports center and this is this is a and depending on how you feel about him i i mean it as a compliment you are very similar to Kirk Herbstreet in my mind, in the way you talk about things and the way you process information and your pacing. Mm. Um, and I love listening to Kirk Herbstreet. I love Kirk Herbstreet too. That's a, I that's love the way a I love the way he 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 talks through football and and he carries his segments. I think you guys have a very similar way of um, of pacing yourselves and and getting your information across. Yeah. Um, and that's always something I've thought about. Like every time Kirk Herbstreet's on, I'm like, dude, I love this guy and the way he commentates games, gives his chair ones their, their ability to do their thing and knows, knows all the mechanics, knows the game super in depth. Um, and so I've really, I've really appreciated being able to, uh, compare you two over the years well thanks dave now i'm gonna cry yeah, no, uh <laughs> you guys are so cute real quick kirk curb street's best quality as an analyst is something that i did try and emulate a lot during my casting time and for perspective casters out there particularly chair twos the thing that kirk curb street does really well that i tried to emulate is that he conveys energy and information simultaneously really well he can match a moment be yep. excited but not overtake a moment um and still be informative during that time and it's very it's a very fine line to walk um but for for all uh, the the wannabe analysts and and chair twos out there that's uh, that's definitely a skill that you can learn from uh from what kirk yep. street does that i certainly did one of the goods no uh, doubt. Are you ready for the next question we are yeah please <clears throat> how has smite changed since you started casting Ooh, that is or, a good, that's a good question, Destiny. Or rather, like, how has Smite changed you, if mm. you don't want to oh. go with the... That's a much longer question. Yeah, that's yeah. a much longer question. Either um, the question you want. I'm trying to think, because I started Season 7. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously the SPL has changed as far as orgs go. We're all, we're all um, you know, internal, and, and so the way the, or, the, the league is structured has definitely changed. Um... I'm trying to think of the big like sweeping changes from seven to nine. Obviously, like a lot of stuff on the map is has changed. Mm-hmm. If if that's the direction. Uh, yeah, I don't think she's looking she's for going with patch notes like, or anything super like granular. That, Just no. like yeah, what like <laughs> pacing? How how has what you? I'm guessing what she want is the is the crux of this question as far as casting goes. Is like what has changed in the in how you call the games. Um, mm-hmm. in that in that time. I think for me it's actually kind of unique because I genuinely I mean I was fine when I first started I think a lot of it is is me which is maybe actually the second part of that question um where like what <laughs> I think I've I've changed a lot to the point where how I commentate is super different because I can actually process what's going on now or when when I first started if there wasn't someone fighting like I had to ask a question or my my airtime was just was just not great. Um, so I, I think I think my 
my big changes over the last few years are the ability to predict, maybe not the right word, but get a good feel of things that are happening next, reading team fights better. Um, the game has definitely slowed down recently, which I don't necessarily dislike. I do think it opens up more opportunity for um, discussion earlier on in the game. If there are good storylines, it's super easy mm-hmm. to get those across. Um, potentially makes the the big later on game team fights more impactful, more important. I mean, even though it's slower earlier on, if there's like a one big team fight around the FG, it's like a manufactured, this is the important moment right here and now. Um, so this year is, is slowed down a bit team fight wise, but but I think the, the biggest change has just been me and my my knowledge of the game and the ability to actually understand what's happening and and you know i caught a little bit of flack when when we first transitioned over we from paladins to smite and we we knew it would be something that was met with sort of mixed emotion because obviously there were some big names going out some newer names coming in um and i i think people appreciated sort of the general raw talent that i had but like i definitely was lacking on on game knowledge at the time and even still sometimes nowadays i i lack on it but um I think if I were to now go back and cast some moments in, like, Season 7 when I first started, uh, there are definitely plenty of things that that I think I could do better. Just by, actually, we had to go back, and and for some content pieces that will be coming out around Worlds, go back and look at plays from the past. Um, And, of course, through that, we hear our own commentary. And so, like, listening to me in Season 7, like super monotone at, at times like very it, it, in like very little inflection team fighting was okay but like just the way i talked through stuff throughout the the slower points in the game felt less exciting felt more pedestrian um mm-hmm. and so you know specific game wise yeah i think we you know it slowed down a little bit which opens up for more back and forth discussion which i actually really enjoy i love just being able to chat with the guy who's next to me for a little while um, but the biggest sweeping changes over the last, like, three years are, are really just my my game knowledge and ability to read the game, and, and it's totally changed my outlook on things and how I set up for team fights, knowing when to drop team fights, looking at the freaking mini-map every once in a while to know when <laughs> ganks are happening, little things like that, um, mm-hmm. I think have really built up. Because, you know, I never came from a Smite background, so for, for a lot of like ex pros or players who are at super high levels, they're learning to to cast while having all this in depth game knowledge. I was kind of the reverse, um, so I think I I really had a lot of growing to do, and and that was probably my biggest change over the last few years. Nice. Yeah, I think for me, um, number one, the easiest thing I kind of touched on it earlier. My voice changed a ton. Um, yeah. if you go back and listen to season three, when I first started, don't, don't listen to any like world championship or anything like that, because our, our vocal cords are just like, so, so tattered by the end, by yep. the end. But if you just listen to like regular season, season three or regular season, early season four, my voice is really high pitched in comparison, um, to what it is now uh, and what it eventually became. And it's because I just used my voice so much. Um, people yeah. forget how much we were casting back then. Like season four, we had oh man, SCL, yeah. uh, S. I don't think was it SML then. I think it might have been the Smite Minor League yeah. was yeah. SCC, and then we had the SGS, the Smite Global Series. We had. I'm pretty sure Smite was being broadcast seven days a week. Uh, we didn't all work seven days a week, but we would work five um, and not have back to back off days. And it was just nothing but casting. Um, and it, it is just, it, it was just a ridiculous amount of smite. Um, and really, if we're, my voice just deepened from, from overuse uh, over that amount of time. But I'm not displeased with it. My, I, uh, I've told the story before, but in college, I had an on-camera professor who was an Emmy-winning producer. She's the best teacher I've ever had, but incredibly blunt uh and not always super nice. And she told me that if I wanted to make it um, on a national scale, uh, I should start 
smoking cigars and drinking whiskey uh, <laughs> in order to start damaging my vocal cords to lower my voice because my voice was too high. Um, but I, I took the harder route. I just like casted a million games of Smite uh, mm-hmm. over the course of a couple of years. But that was <laughs> that was like the biggest difference, I think, in how my casting changed was that I was able to get into a vocal range that was much easier to get loud without straining because you can get loud but go lower in your pitch um and that's kind of how like if you listen to f dot or hindu man those two are 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 complete masters of it they don't go up with their hype whereas dave does dave's dave rises with when he gets when he gets more hyped those two would drop their pitch but raise their volume and Mm -hmm. i kind of learned how to emulate that because my vocal range wasn't good enough to go up um so i kind of needed to learn how to go down uh, in those moments and that was uh, and that was pretty transformative for my casting style was being able to uh, go low in those um, yeah. in those bigger moments and uh, back in the day I paid a lot more for my mobile service um, because mint mobile wasn't a thing back when I first started you know there was no deal you know it was all these middlemen and brick and mortar stores and all this complete nonsense they had to deal with it, it, for casters now they can simply just change on over to mint mobile uh which is uh, which is way better than anything we had back in the day look you get premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month you get to keep your same phone and your same phone number um you get the nation's largest 5g network barracuda and destiny love it uh insert a minute of Barra talking about how much he loves Mint Mobile. Uh, that's what it says, Barra. Go ahead. Oh, oh. Uh, it I says it right that, here. You know. Yeah, I thought that you had done that part. Yeah, <laughs> me and Destiny love Mint Mobile. You know, we use it <laughs> daily, and uh, I really enjoy the. Sorry for this sarcastic uh, <laughs> response. But you just threw it to me, and I was over here staring at the questions. <laughs> yeah, for real. It's it's the easiest way to save money. Like, you guys know me by now, I love saving money on everything. I literally, today, stopped by Kroger on the way home. Get a coupon? And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, they do markdowns on their vegetables. Oh, and, okay. And uh, their breads. And I will buy everything that's marked down and make, like, a meal out of it. Mm. So, this the is way meal. easier than doing that. You can yes. literally sit at your home, order Mint Mobile, it comes fresh to your door... You get to keep your phone, keep your line, and uh, it takes like two seconds to install. It's super easy. Couldn't be easier. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped straight to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash backliners. That's mintmobile.com slash backliners. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash backliners. All right, Bear, I think we got time for one more. One more here. I'll try to be be short. Is uh, it, is fast approaching, Dave? Who I, are you gonna take? I, what pick are you? I don't even know. I'm I'm pick two. Oh um, great! I have one player that's already my first round pick in two of my other leagues, and so if he falls to me in this league, I'm going to take him again just to avoid having to play against him in, in any league. Anyway, mm. sorry, I'll be short winded on this answer. I promise. Well, this was my favorite question. Okay, uh, great. If you could. Take your knowledge now and go back and cast one other Perfect. world's uh, game mm. from a past like Smite season. Which one would you teleport back to and cast? It's a great uh, question. Destiny's good at this. She should do a podcast. A different world's like... game. Um, I think that would simply that would just have to be like one of the best like series that comes to mind for me because i've only you know i've only been around for for a few worlds mm-hmm. here and um i don't know i think i think i would have loved if you if i take at like atmosphere and all of that into account season six worlds the sk run mm-hmm. i think if i were able to cast as well as i do now i don't you know <laughs> when i first started no chance i'm taking that from anyone who was there <laughs> i still probably i still probably wouldn't but my, my point now um I would probably cast that one at, at DreamHack mm-hmm. Season 6. Um, the the SK run would, would be pretty cool to go back and, and run through. Those big moments, just what casters live for. Um, and that, that set was, was pretty chaotic. Mm-hmm. Boy, was it. Um, yeah, we had to stall for an hour uh, almost in Game 1 because of Persephone yep, that issues. Part, though. 
Um, (laughs) That was one of the hardest things I think I ever had to do on broadcast was on on a stage, um, Hindu and I like stalled for so long (laughs) through multiple game resets and pauses and all that kind of stuff. And boy, that was that was work. Um, for sure. I remember not that one. when I, when I think, well, I mean, when I think back to like that set, that's really yeah. the first thing I think of was how hard that, that stalling was. Cause stalling is always really hard, but to stall game one world's finals, like mm. oh, that was so hard. Um, yeah, I think the first thing that comes to mind for me, um, is season four finals. Um, oh yeah. It, I don't want to. I don't want to bring it up uh, as a bad memory for for my homie Tom, who I thought had an unbelievable cast overall. But um, at the very end of that set, he got a little he got a little tripped up on the end call, um, and that can happen, um, especially when it was really on the fence. And I think that I was able to help a good amount. Like I wasn't upset with how how I set him up to get back on track, but. If I could go back and do that uh, better, um, I think mm-hmm. I would. Um, and then uh, to to end my answer on a particularly sad note, um, I also, if I could, I would definitely go back and do the season eight finals uh, with Finch again, mm-hmm. and just you know really enjoy that set um, as much as I could. Uh, you know, it was kind of a hard set to get as amped for because it was in studio Mm -hmm. um and we were disappointed that it was in studio but i thought that you know it was still an unbelievable set and i thought we had a really good cast and and everything like that but you know it's just one of those moments that uh if i could go back and appreciate it even more Mm -hmm. uh now then then i would certainly want to good answers guys Thanks, Barry. And thanks for good questions, Destiny. We kind of rambled. I didn't expect Destiny's questions to be yeah, so I good. Because I thought they were your questions, Barry. I, w- I would have given Destiny's well, questions way more time. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's understandable. I just, like, I I just really wanted to, like, have good questions for Dolson. And I was like, I don't feel Smart. like I'm adequate enough to, like, you know, oh I God. see how much weight he does in the gym. Like, yep. After I'm the just... whole Smith Machine thing, I'm, I'm <laughs> uh, knocked down a peg. I gave, I gave you the ick. Also, I thought earlier in this episode when you're talking about the two things like with the ick aggro, I thought that was gonna lead into. I was like, if they're paying too much for their wireless, service, <laughs> that would have been I good. I was waiting so Damn, long honestly, for that. that I literally been pointed at the camera. I was like, oh, he's not doing it. Was, honestly, something like that could be an ick for people. Like, and I'm it's not true. kidding when I say like an ick. I've read online or, or seen a comment on a TikTok or a TikTok posted where like someone's ick. Is like they're they're walking with their boyfriend and their boyfriend trips and falls and watching him like flail and fall to the what? ground like seeing him in like a vulnerable like flip floppy like weak state like has given people like the ick before and like suddenly what? they're like now clearly it's like ridiculous I that person that type yeah. of person you know doesn't deserve a happy relationship if if their person tripping like suddenly icks him out or whatever <laughs> but like. That's the like the ridiculous stuff that people ick out over. It's like a dude like tripping and suddenly like seeing like the way their body moves when they trip is like an ick. And it's that's what's that's so weird. That's what's in my brain now. I, I have an ick to share that is not podcast friendly, but we gotta close the show so that we can get to it so that I can tell you guys because you guys are gonna love this one. Trust me on that. Uh random question of the week, of course. We do have to do uh on that topic. Um I know we talked about setting up a Patreon. I did not get a chance to last week. I'm hoping to this week, though Lord knows I am super busy this week. It will be coming, and we will be able to get your uh, fan submissions for Random Question of the Week a little bit easier. My Random Question of the Week this week has to do with board games, because uh, I had some people over for board games this weekend. It was very fun. It really wasn't a board game that we played. We played a game called Werewolf, which is basically like Mafia or or anything like that. Um, But I really love playing that game. It's super fun. Um, Do you guys have a favorite board game that you really enjoy? Um, I hate board games. Really? My family mm-hmm. my family is a, a board game powerhouse. We play we play a lot of Settlers of Catan. Great game. Um, which is one of my favorite board games. Um, and also <laughs> the offshoot of the, the you know, the Oregon Trail used to be an old computer game. 
they have a board game that you can play that is absurdly hard. And as a part of that board game, when your wagon needs to go out and hunt and eat meat, there's a separate game called Oregon Trail, like, Hunt, that you go and play. And it's, like, absurdly hard to win the game. Everyone's playing together. Holy crap. Um, and you have to, like, roll dice to, like, you have, you have, like, 16 total bullets, and it takes a certain amount to kill different animals, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's such a hard game to play. Um, but my family, and, and, and as weird as we are, um, we'll sit on my parents' back deck, we'll all get together and have dinner. Um, and when everyone's rolling the dice to try to kill the animal, make their bullet hit, um, we'll all sit out there and just chant meat, 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 <laughs> meat over and over while pounding the table. And we're in an open, we're, you know, we're, we're in a, just a right um, screened in porch. And so surely the whole neighborhood can hear us chanting meat. Um, so Catan is my real answer, but I have the most fun playing the Oregon Trail meat killing game and chanting to kill the animals with my family. That's uh that's absolutely awesome. Barry, you have you played like anything beyond like Monopoly? I feel like that's what happens when people say they don't okay. like board games. It's like I've played Monopoly Monopoly and Risk and don't like them. It's like, yeah, no one does. So one of my best friends is like really into board games and anytime we hang out, like for a while it was like, oh like what board game should I play? And it's like 45 minutes of him Rules. telling us how to play the game and by that point i'm like i don't care anymore yeah like, i'm much more of the kind of guy that just like give me the controller don't tell me how to play the game and i'll just play the game sure and i'm the same way with like anything like i don't really like to read instructions i just like to hop in mm. and you can't really do that with i mean i think you can do that with board games but there's so many no. like intricacies that i'm an instructions main i love instructions yeah i'm the exact opposite. Uh, like, give me like 15 minutes of instructions, and like that's like acceptable. But sure. anything beyond that, like, my, I'm sorry, my attention span just go, it just flies away. Like, we I, got... I, I will, I won't remember things. Like, yeah, that's fair. You gotta, you guys gotta all come over and do Werewolf uh, sometime. That game is unbelievably mm -hmm. fun. It's not even a true board game. Uh, my my Werewolf family fun. is really into board games as well. Dave, Taboo is our big one. Mm, um, Taboo is good among our family, and that's a good one for you too, Bear. Not a lot of rules with that one. Just we get playing, to say a word and don't use that. We'd play uh. like card games. I think we play like Great Down Moody and like Spoons with my family, but we were mm -hmm. into like board games. We were more. I like, have so many oh, hearts as well. That's a that's yeah, a big. Yeah, it's not really a board game. Um, my family loves to drink and play Cards Against Humanity. Um, oh yeah, classic. Not really not a board game, but like good game. Hearing my saint. Yep innocent mother saying these <laughs> horrific things is always just just very humorous to everyone oh i bet i yeah. can only imagine all right well we gotta get going so that i can prep for my pick here in fantasy football i haven't even logged in yet to our league at all this year uh, what pick it'll are be you? fine i don't know <laughs> what's your team name are you tables are my job that could be me yeah it's an i think yeah. you should leave themed fantasy football right. league uh, mine's farmers only so Good Farmers on. Okay, that's not bad. All right, thanks everyone for listening slash listening slash watching. Uh, make sure you follow Dave at Dolson Live on Twitter if you want to. Uh, all oh, that I'm kind back. of good stuff. Follow he's me. back. Yep, he's back on Twitter. <laughs> get get in there. Uh, we'll catch you next time here with the Backliners. Barra, you know what to do. Bye. Clean, clean. That was out, such a baby. good one. That, that was, was such good. a good one. Yep. Well, that, that might be the best.